okay, so we're just talking. Let's just see what. But I'm gonna chop it all up. So let's not worry about it. Talk about whatever we want. Just find out what you're up to, what you're doing. I like that you're doing Tibetan stuff. And happy to hear more about that. Yeah, what happened was that I work with a, a commune in Brooklyn called Golden Drum. It's kind of shamanistic. Mm -hmm. And it's run by a Peruvian master called Maestro Manuel Rufino. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, I, they invite me there sometimes to do a talk on the winter solstice or the spring mm. equinox. And, nice. and it's a very interesting group of people. They do a lot of ayahuasca type things as well. Mm. He has centers all over the U.S. And, and South America and Europe. And so they proposed me to be involved with Maestro Manuel and do a program at the Rubin and as a part of the series on the future. And the gist of it is that when they met me, the program directors, they said, why don't you curate all six programs? Sure. And what they really wanted is they wanted kind of ethnic people, meaning, meaning when you talk about the Tibetan Buddhist calendar, and actually this Lama is going to be talking about Terma, nice. which is because which is, it's called Astrology, Prophecy, and Divination, the six programs. So essentially Terma are a kind of prophecy, I guess. What would you call them? Well, there's all kinds of Terma. Um, I can tell you, you want to hear a little story about it? Sure. Okay. In 2004, my teacher is Kevin Kato Rinpoche. He doesn't speak English and he's 95. But in 2004, I went with him and some other people to China and Tibet. And one of the areas that we went to in China was called Mount Wutai Shan. Mount Wutai Shan are five mountains in the shape of a die, number five, you know, four and one. Okay. And the idea is that, you, that the way Rinpoche explained it is, is that this was where astrology entered our world system. Entered? Entered. Oh, entered. Okay. And the way it happened was that the Bodhisattva Manjushri appeared at Wu Tai Shan as, in, in, as a youth, and out of the top of his head came the 84,000 Dharma termas. But at that time, he gave them all to, 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 to mankind who, were, who, who loved them. In fact, they loved them so much that they neglected their Dharma. Hmm. This is the story. And so Manchutri took them all back. And everyone is really sad. So Guru Rinpoche, Padmasambhava, right, right. called the second Buddha, uh, went to him and pleaded for mankind to please return these, to do something. So what, what he, agreed, he agreed to do, but what he did is that, that he gave them back, but he gave them back as terma. And he buried them in rocks and caves, under things, but mostly in the mind itself. And they were like, to be time release capsules, so as time goes by, they would ripen and become found. Right. And the way a term is found is that it's not just found, it's found and conceptually understood, experienced and realized. And this can take many, many years. Right. And then it reaches the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went there and spent about a week uh, doing different things like that. Uh, and when I came home, it affected me a lot. Mm. I, all this writing began to pour out of me. Mm. So I like to blame it on that. But <laughs> who knows? So I, it could just be that I like to write. But anyway, so yeah, Terma. And what was your question about Terma? I was telling you the kind of, you probably want to hear my story. That's pretty well, interesting. Well, I do. I do want to hear it because because I'm going to be having a dialogue with him to try to elicit right. questions about it. Right. Well, ask him about Mount Wu Tai Shan. I, and there's also many Tibetans that are there in the middle of China. Right. And I've written a lot about it. Wu Tai Shan? Yeah, Wu W U T. I guess it's T A I Shan S H A N. But it could be written differently, different trans trans phonetics. I'm not sure. I'll store it like that. Yeah. That's good. So that's something to know. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. And 
<laughs> so we're having this Peruvian shaman and I, he's going to talk about, he knows a lot about Mayan, Aztec, and Native American calendars. Nice. I'd be interested in that. Which is very interesting, I think. You know, like the healing lodge and all of that, which is, totally. I mean, they have their own kind of astrology in a way. Oh, totally. We've also come across the Ruben. I haven't met this woman yet, but she's a Siberian shamaness who also times her rituals on the basis of where planets are. Like, and I don't even know what kind of astrology she would be using. Maybe you'll find out. You'll Maybe find she'll explain it. Yeah, exactly. And that's sort of the idea. And, and also a guy called Daniel Pinchbeck who wrote a book called The Return of Quetzalcoatl which is really about prophet Mayan prophecies and so on. So it'll be an interesting set of programs, and we don't know where they're going to go. And I haven't really done something like this before, but it'll be, I think, an interesting well, experience. I think you're a good person to do it. I know. Uh, it's, and aside from that, what are you doing with yourself and well, in general? You what's, know, I, I turned 75 this summer. I'll so be 77. I'm, I'm feeling, yeah. feeling it. No kidding, me too. And, and, um, and you know, and I'm... I would love to slow down in terms of work, but I really can't. I feel like I'm running in front of the train. <laughs> I hate that feeling. I don't have a lot of money, but I have enough money to live. Right. And I don't really want to do much right. so that it works out pretty good. I'm coming here not to sell anything, but just to kind of take the temperature of right. astrology. Right. Yeah. So I'm kind of in that place. You know, I mean, I'm trying to stay as active as I can. and. Um, and I do astrology from home. I mean, nowadays with Skype, I don't have to go anywhere to do it. That's nice. And I have clients, clients all over the world. In fact, wherever I go, I can do readings. So as long as I've got an internet connection. That's cool. So that's worked out pretty well. And I'm doing a lot of research now on autism and the autism spectrum. I don't know using, much about it. Using lifetime astrology oh, okay. on the assumption that in my system, the ninth, the, the ninth house is the seven weeks after conception. And that's also the time when our brain is developing uh -huh. in the womb. Hence the idea of long journeys as well, that, that the, at the beginning of the ninth house is conception, so the sperm makes a long journey to get to the egg. Yes. The fertilized <laughs> ovum makes a long journey up the fallopian tube to get to the wall of the uterus right. and embed itself. Right. So that's two long journeys, basically. Journey on, right? And and it also because the brain develops, it's also called higher, you know, higher mind in the old terminology. Now, are you writing a book about this? Well, I already have. I mean, a, a new vision of astrology. Yeah, okay, talked cool. about these things. But I, I'm now discovering also that even the symbols of the houses of the of the Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces actually described very accurately the biology of the four stages of gestation. Me meaning in the ninth house, we go through all of the pre-human evolutionary stages. And, and, and by the end of the ninth house at the MC is when the mother realizes she's pregnant. And by that time, which is 49 days, very much like the Tibetan Buddhist yeah. period know. of time of, of the, of the um, bardo, that essentially we become fully human for the first time. So the symbol of the centaur shows the animal body that we move through and the human body which we move towards. So the, it's emergence of the human from the animalistic. Now you're getting nice graphics for all this? I mean, you're the graphic master. I, well, I'm finding ancient images of the constellations. That's cool. Like and then Capricorn, that. the goatfish, with the curly yeah, tail, looks a lot like the spine, like the spinal column. That's and true. during the, the, the tenth house, which is Saturnine, of course. Mm -hmm. Right. That's cool. Aquarius is. I found an old image of Aquarius, the sign, which is two water snakes swimming in parallel in opposite directions. Which to me, it's it's actually the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system in the eleventh house, in the middle stage of gestation. And that's a very appropriate image, the water bearer, because it's actually, it, they say that it's almost like fluid in a funny way, the way the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems communicate. And then Pisces is, of course, we're swimming in the amniotic fluid connected by an umbilical to the mother. Right. 
the, I mean, it's perfect for the biologic, and it's also about the lymphatic system, is the 12th house. You do this kind of stuff, you do. Hmm? You do this kind of stuff, right? I love no, the, nobody really does it. I, mean, I love those kinds of things. I know, but I think it's great that what we love, right? Yeah. Is what we do. But I'll send you an image of this just for you sure. You should, you should. I, like I have a one one page image that shows the symbols and describes And you know I like images. Hmm? You know I like images. Yes, I know you do. Yes. I know you do. Wow. We both do. We both do. <laughs> That's very cool. And, and I'm also, you know, I, I stated in my talk this morning that, you know, you were really the first one to ever introduce lifetime astrology in in a computer program. Did we do that? Yeah. Okay, in the basic we, yeah. Blue Star. Yeah, basically. And then there's a new book, Blue Star out. I don't think it has it, but um, maybe it should. I no longer run it. But I know you don't. Know. It's okay. It's good. I'm happy. I have a big garden, and I... I write a lot. You do? I totally do. And I do a lot of Dharma practice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just live. I have eight grandkids, for Christ's sake. I do a lot of babysitting, which is very taxing, but yeah, very sure. beautiful. And it's absolutely yeah, liberating. Yeah, because they have so much energy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole, that's the basis of the lifetime astrology thing, which is early in life, we have this metabolism that's so fast. That's right. Oh. Um, Boy, that, that for does, them, it, does when, it ever thin out? When they see you sit down for 10 minutes, for them it feels like hours. Like, right. get up, Grandpa. Well, then I read them a book. <laughs> right. Oh, no. It, my wife and I tag team it. I and go how, take a nap. And how is she? Good. She's seven years younger than me. She's oh. doing fine. She's home tending a garden. Well, she I didn't want it. She, the last thing she wants to do is to hear any more astrology. She's she, had 47 years of it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that it's. Um, my mind is still working, which is good. It seems fine to me. I'm still there. Yeah, I don't have any trouble there. Other than I have a little recall issues occasionally. Oh, that, that's part of names, but that's typical. I'm, they're always there. It just takes a little longer to access. To find them. To find no, them. I do the same thing. Exactly. So, so I was doing research. We were a friend of mine and I were doing a documentary. And we had the Dalai Lama's approval about meditation and neuroscience. Oh, cool. And I was doing some research on it, and I discovered some extraordinary things. Among them, that this is something I'd never known before, and you'll appreciate this, that of the neurons in our brain, of which there are a billion, it's the same number that there are galaxies in the known universe, but also that what what I didn't realize and discovered was that something upwards of 80% of the neurons in the brain are devoted to processing vision. Yeah, and I, had other a, I had a TIA in, in my eye, small stroke. You did? I'm okay, I'm fine, but it was uh, very difficult to recover from. May you never have it. So you had like a memory glitch as well. Not so much, a little one. No, no, I think it's the same as your. I, I, takes a, I think that's getting old. No, my eyes are still good. Up. Well, I can show you something. You, you like, you like images, so yeah. I can just show you what I've done. Maybe a hundred thousand of these. Whoa. Which is the way I do stuff. Um, you don't like. You don't ever do things halfway, do you? You got it. <laughs> This is, this is what I've been doing, this close-up oh, photography. For, yeah, beautiful. And I'm pretty much known among big-time photographers for being one of the very best at it. Are you tweaking these at all? Well, of course. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to develop it. Right, sure. sure but, That's beautiful. Yeah, just... Beautiful. Yeah, it's just all kinds of... But I've, I, I literally have thousands and thousands and thousands of them, but... I've never printed one out. Uh huh. I just look at them. Mm -hmm. You know. Beautiful. Yeah, it's nice. So I develop that a lot, and I have incredible lenses, hundred of them maybe, the, the finest lenses there are. Right. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah, it's fun. My daughter Ptolemy uh -huh. is is a weaver in the UK, oh, that's and she's cool. a renowned weaver at this point. I love weaving, particularly colors. And she, oh, does it flowers? She takes color schemes from flowers. Oh well, yeah, a lot of the time. She should, and they're very sensual. Absolutely, also, totally. absolutely. It's all about that. 
That's cool. I'll show you some. Yeah, I like weaving. I even have a loom somewhere. I, I, I don't do that. Well, she has a huge loom. Well, I mean. I'm sure she does. <laughs> no, that's not one of her that's weaving. That's a weaving? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm that's, saying that's that's a, 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 a amazing that's weaving. That's a photograph yeah. of a flower that's that beautiful. I took. That's beautiful. I love flowers. Yeah, I do too. Oh, well, you, you very much influenced me in graphics. Good. Yeah, in that's the best good. way possible. I still I like have copies of all the, all the great books that you've Well, yeah, all of those mandalas that I did all of those years ago. Or... Have you ever seen the Noor book of mandalas? The what? It's a seven, seven color, it's Japanese, the Noor book of mandalas. No. It's about 40 pounds. No. They're now worth thousands of I have one. You would love it. No, oh, it it's sounds very, great. Very, very beautiful. And the finest printing I've ever seen. Right. Huh. The printing gets cheaper and cheaper and worse and worse. It's funny, my, for some like, odd reason, oh, that's what I mean. right. And I've also made all of, we had this Bhutan monk at our center for a few years that was a, spoke seven languages and was an expert calligrapher and wow. drawing. I have all of his original line drawings, wow. which I've made available. I'll just show you what they look like. Huh. Which you probably would also like to some degree. Uh, let me see if I can find that. That would be, be here. So these are these are all, these are all free books that, that I have that I give to people. Uh -huh. And this is just astrology ones, but I also have uh, lots and lots of Dharma. Uh, yeah, Dharma books. No. Just many, many, many. Forty some of them. Um, huh. What was I going to show you? Whoa. The, yeah, these are the three books of his drawings. But they're just like this. They're nothing fancy. But mm. Oh, beautiful. They're, they're all. I've got hundreds and hundreds of them um, that are like that. I went to see Situ Rinpoche at his monastery. Well, he's been to our place twice. But, 10 or 12, 10 years ago or so, and, and he gave me a book of all of his... Well, he loves that stuff. He loves it. Yeah, he, he get, there, this is the guy that did it, and this is the kind of stuff he did, you know. He spent, we spent hours talking about it. Well, he was wonderful. He came to our center twice. This was when those guys could travel. Right? I know. This is an astrologer. I know. Right? Well, he was stuck in India at that time, but I think he's he has still, a center here. He's still it's, stuck. That, they're all afraid that the Chinese aren't going to like it if the Tibetans do much circulation. So they restricted him. I know. It's horrible. His holiness has been here for almost a year. I don't know what he's doing. I think he might be trying to get citizenship. I think he's not appreciating the restraints that the Indians are putting on him. And I spent a lot of time with him being a photographer. I did two books on his, of him, photographs. Right, sure. Um, and he is wonderful, what, the 17th. Oh, I, I've heard that. He so, looks so much like the 60s. He's suddenly not. beginning to... He's so beautiful. I know. He's so beautiful. Well, I've seen him a few times at Woodstock. Oh, nice. I like that. That's woven textiles. It's about this size. Wow. That's and framed, and she stretches it over a picture frame, so it looks like a painting. Oh, here we go. Other direction. Wow. Right? Yeah. These, it's all hand-dyed hand-dyed cotton. Very individual. And very interesting color schemes. Nice, and, nice. You know? I like that one. It's right up, right up my alley in a way. And, and oh, it's, I it's love beautiful these. work. I love colors. You yeah. Know, yeah. I do too. Yeah. Well, I know you do. Right? And she's designing carpets wow. now that are made near Benares in India. Wow. Some modern. Right? Really? And this is your daughter? My daughter. This is cool. Yeah, she's 46. Wow, well, yeah, I've got a bunch of <laughs> That's beautiful. Because your kids are around the same age, right? I have one of them is in her 40s. Right. The rest are down to early 30s. I've got four kids. Right. Well, I always loved your graphics. And you took such care about it. No one else ever did. I know. Um, I have I only used it my way, but I've not produced <laughs> your kind of stuff. I just yeah, I, I know. Illustrate what, it, what I need to. 
straight or lemon? That's really lemon. Mason. So how do you do? Hello. So I'm going to mosey. Okay, be cool. Great to see you, Michael. Yeah, you too. As always, and yeah. lots of love to your wife. Yeah, yeah thanks.